Alright, hello everyone, it's uh, Fadi Kader with another episode of Canada on the Rocks. Welcome back. This show is all about Ottawa and the businesses around Ottawa and today we are joined with one of the best businesses I've seen in the city, also uh, one of my best friends. And we go back about, what, 25 years now, Hassan? Around 25. 25 yeah. yeah. So, this is Hassan Akkawi, the owner and operator of Khalil Barbershop, which has been around for roughly about 33 years. 33 years. Amazing. So tell me a little bit more about the shop, Sam. Khalil Barbershop. Khalil is my father. Mm -hmm. It's not my name. My name is Hossam. My nickname is Sam. We started me and my older brother, Ahmed, in 1990. Then my brother, he has to go back home. And I take care of the business since 1993 until now. And uh, every year until now, it's going up and up and up and up. And since I started, I was I was doing as good as now. And at that time, it was hard work because no Instagram, no, no social media, no social media. It was a hard work, physically yeah. work. We did well from the first, and we're still doing. Hopefully, we're still gonna do better and better and better. I'm glad that you brought that up because for a lot of businesses that we have in the city, advertising and actually putting their name out is one of the hardest things to do. So maybe you can shed some light and tell me a little bit more about how back in the day you were able to, you know, get your name out. First of all, you have to do the quality and you have to be honest mm -hmm. and fair. And this business, it's more personality. You know, you can do the best job ever. Yeah. But you don't have the personality. You are fake. People, they don't like you. 100%. And one of the things that I've, I've noticed myself as well, too, like come in and sitting in your chair for once every two weeks for the last 25 years is it feels like, you know what, the second I sit in that okay. chair. Fadi, listen to this. Mm -hmm. People, they ask me, why don't you be retired, Sam? You're doing well. You have employee. You have a team. is working. Okay. I know you for 25 years, for example. I know people for 37 years, 33 years, whatever. Say if I retired... How can I see Fadi? How often do you come for a haircut? At least once every couple of weeks. Oh, okay. Say three weeks, okay? And when I get to see you every month, say for every month, for 25 years, if I get to retire, how can I see Fadi? It'll have to be a coffee date. How can I see Richard? How can I see Dave? How can I see George? How can I see Eli? Marco. You know? Everyone. So... I love what I'm doing. Barber environment, perfect. That's why you don't see too many barbers retired. Not money wise, because they love the environment. Nothing like barber environment. It is. It's like, um, to me at least, like just kind of speaking from my own experience, every time I come and sit down in your chair, I literally feel like I am leaving a piece of me at the chair. You know, like it, it literally feels like it's almost like going to the therapist. Do you know why? Because it's not fake. You feel comfortable with me. I feel comfortable with you. I talk to you for 25 years, man. Let me, we talk your about kid. everything. <laughs> you know, like me, like your kid, how old is he now? He's, he's a young yeah. man now. And I have a lot of clients. They used to come like a kid. Now they're coming with a kid. Yo, I used to come as a kid. But too. I was two <laughs> years old. Back in the university I days. was two years old though. <laughs> <laughs> back in the university days, I used to come and like see you. And, and that's kind of where I started because it was very close to the university. It was really close to, you know, just coming off the university, coming in at like five minutes, get a haircut, go back. But what I notice is that every time I go in, it's like this atmosphere of welcoming. You know, you sit down, you chat. How was your day? How was it last week? Hey, you were talking to me about this a couple of weeks ago. How did it go? How was that date? That kind of stuff that just like makes you feel like, you know what, you're talking to a buddy, you're talking to a friend here. For sure, we are friends, we are buddies, that's for sure. And let's keep talking about Khalil Barbershop. Khalil Barbershop, you can consider it's academy, okay? I don't want to, I'm not bragging, but this is reality, mm -hmm. okay? I've noticed it too, I mean, you've, you've had people coming in, coming out, like working for you, and I see them opening up their own shops. Okay, just go on Google Map. Okay, take a look at all barbershop around Khalil Barbershop. They learned from Khalil Barbershop. You know what I mean? Yeah, and I, they I can name at least six. I seven wish of them, them the best. Yeah. I'll be. I'm very proud of them mm -hmm. to do well, and I am very happy when I see they're doing well. But this is academy, and it's the same time. It's a family business. I have my brother Ahmed. Okay, when I was a kid, I learned through him and my dad, and now I have Adam, my nephew, is working with me. Yeah. So this is, you can say it, it's a family business, all right? My grandpa, my dad, my uncle, my brother, Adam, my nephew. So it's, a, you can say five generation, maybe? Five generation. That's as a family business. And when I say academy, like, for, for example, Farzad. 
Farzad, he's been working with Khalil Barbershop 10 years. Farzad, he learned from Khalil Barbershop. I have a Vincenzo. Vincenzo. He, he has his own diploma since almost 20 years from Rome, Italy. He stopped for a while. Then I trained him again from scratch. Mm -hmm. So this is academy they learn through Khalil Barbershop. Yeah. And they are Farzad and Adam. They are not blood, but they feel and I and I consider them as a family. We work as a family. Oh, I know. Like when I come in, the, the bromance is just unreal between the everyone. And then it's like this cohesive unit. Like the, no one is arguing. No one is fighting. It's always, oh, you know, like no. one of them will jump in. Hey, can I get you a coffee? Even though I'm not, I'm not their client. Uh, another one will come in. Hey, would you need some water? Like that. Just feeling like you're belong. You know what I mean? If they're not happy at work, do you think they're going to behave like they this? They won't be there. No. One thing you touched on, which I want to bring it up as well, because I, I feel like it's it's missing. It's not highlighted enough for a lot of businesses out there. You've, you know, this leadership that you have with them. And, and to me, like the, the sense of manager or leader, or like someone that's, you know, coaching is having that ability to get them to the point where they can go out on their own and be on their own in a way. So that speaks volumes. Like uh, to me, that just shows like, you know, your sense of leadership that you brought onto this team. And the charisma that you bring to it, that it makes them just really want to want to do well by you, and help their clients as well too. Um, so one thing that I you know I want to mention to the crowd out there is the reason why we I chose you. It's not just because like, I mean at the end of the day you're one of my best friends. Yes. Uh, also, how is my hair by the way? Lovely. Oh, uh, that barber Beautiful. did a great it's job. Not the hair, it's you, man. <laughs> it's, it's you. See, this is what I'm talking about. It's just you coming in. It's not about. It, you always feel like a million dollar after you leave. But the reason why I chose you to come on the show, with all honesty, is two things. One, your reputation. Everyone knows you in the city. Thank you. Two, which is very, very important. I want to highlight those couple of awards that you've won. And one of them has been seven years in a row, that Top Choice Award. It's been literally seven years in a row. That's not a small feat, being the Top Choice Award for almost all of Ontario. Talk to me a little bit bo about both. And then the other one is the Consumer's Choice Award. That's the first Consumer's one. Consumer's Choice year. Award and the Top 3 rated. Okay, I'll tell you about the... Uh, yeah. Let's start with the Top Choice Award. First, Top Choice Award, obviously, we do work hard. We have a good service, yes. I have a great team, yes. But at the same time, I have a great clientele. Mm -hmm. If you do the best service and best job and they don't appreciate it, you're still the same, the same spot. Yeah. But when you have that clientele who appreciate the service and like you and wish you the best, they'll vote for you. When we won the Top Choice Award by vote, if they're not happy and they're not receiving good service, they're not going to vote for you. So I have a big thanks for my lovely loyalty clientele. Without them, I won't be where I am now, okay? That's my top choice award. So yes, uh, we won seven years in a row. So what does it take to be a top choice award winner? Like, what are the criteria? How we won it? So uh, people, they vote, but they have so many questions about cleaning, about service, about location, about, you know, yeah. so many questions, okay? And Top Choice Award, uh, they do their calculation and uh, they, uh, they'll choose who's the, the best barber and the best servers and, you know. So that's my Top Choice Award. And uh, this year, it's the first time this category, barber category, they use it by Consumer Choice Award. And that, we don't want it by voting, by data, by reputation. Mm -hmm. And they have their own things, the way they calculate it. And we want it. And uh, we won the top three rated in Arawa. I have something funny to tell you. We, they have something online. It's called the best six barbers. I came the second. Guess why I came the second? Very interesting. Tell me. I came the second because it's a hard time to book an appointment. How busy we are. So instead to be good thing. Yeah. It turned against us. But if we're busy, what can we do? Yeah, I know it. Uh, so book ahead. One of the things that I've done myself as well, too, to just avoid that, because I know it's it's very busy. I actually, what I do is I book like six weeks or like six times in advance. Most of my clients, they do that. Yes. So they I know on ahead. the Tuesday yes. I'm going for a haircut or the Wednesday I'm going for a haircut. It's already booked. It's already in my calendar. Because I know at the end of the day, look, it's two things. One, it's my personal session. 
to feel good about myself. And then two, it's the being nice and groomed that, that makes a whole lot of difference as well too. Well, about you, man, you don't need the haircut to feel good. <laughs> the charisma you have, man, <laughs> sunshine. You. I appreciate it. So tell me a little bit more about uh, the location, like where you guys are at, uh, how you chose it, you know, how long you've been there. It's, it's on 1430 Prince of Wales, Unit uh, 33, the same uh, plaza where is, the same one where is the Passport Canada, Service Canada, yeah. okay. We've been there since 1990. It was inside the mall, it was hidden. Mm -hmm. That's what I'm trying to tell you. It was hidden. We, dis we didn't have the visibility at more now, and we did well at that time. Yeah. No social media, no Google, no nothing. We were hidden inside the mall in the corner, and we were doing good. And the, my previous client, they know what I'm talking about when I say it's hidden. So now we have a better location in the same part, 1430 Prince of Wales, and uh, we're doing very well. You've been at that spot for a little over 25 years, though, like that new spot before 23 years yeah 23, 23 years. years exactly because before i remember i remember coming to the inside of the mall mm -hmm. and it wasn't long no and then i was lost that one day looking for yeah, 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 I'm you i wasn't all right. i yeah. called in you know back there was no cell phones no texting <coughs> back then so i just called in and said hey i'm lost and you're like oh, i don't know it's just, we're out on the outside so just, just for businesses out there because again this shows all about business and businesses in ottawa and what we can do to help them and help people know about Ottawa. Tell those businesses how and what did it take for you to grow that business with no social media, with no advertising at the beginning and budget, all of that stuff. How was it for you? Actually, it was hard and I work physically hard, hours hard. And uh, the way I told you, you have to love what you're doing. I'll give you an example. For example, you can have a professor with a 40 student and he's teaching the 40 student, not all of them the same. Not each student, they can get the mark. And not everybody is smart, mm -hmm. you know? They could be smarter with something else. So not every barber can be a barber. You can teach a person to be a barber, but he cannot be a good barber. If you have it, you have it. Yeah. Okay? Just like a soccer. Not everybody like Messi and Cristiano Ronaldo. There are so many players, but none, no players like Cristiano or Messi. Barbering the same thing. Now it has a lot of barbers. They go on YouTube. They learn a little bit. They open barbershop. They got a tools and they work. Do you know how many clients will fix a haircut after the barbers? They be, they've been opening. Every single plaza they have a barbershop. Yeah. But do you want to tell me that barbershop is a the barbershop? No, because at the end of the day, again, it's that level of comfort with the barber. It's that sense of, you know, like I said before, you feel like you belong to that, you know, that club, uh, in a way, I feel like it's a club. Like when I come in, it's like I belong to this club, this elite 100%. club. hundred percent. You feel home. You feel home. Everybody take care of you. Even like you're waiting for a few minutes. Whoever, Vincenzo, Farzad, Adam, you know, the they ask for espresso, bottle yeah. of water, you know. And you you're sitting home. there the second, the second I feel like, well, the second I sit on the chair, I'm already at ease. And then when I leave, I'm more like my smile is from here to here. And we always take a selfie. Which is, <laughs> it's, it's our thing. Yeah, it's true, it's true. So everybody feel home, everybody feel um, welcome, because they are welcome. And I don't, fi like, I don't fake it. I do love them. I love my client. When I go vacation, you won't believe I miss the environment of the barbershop. Yeah. I miss my client. I miss my team. Like, I miss my tools, man. Nobody believe it. I swear, I miss my tool. When I'm in and I like what you always do this when, whenever you go on vacation. Like I, I get this sort of, hey, by the way, I'm going on vacation in three weeks or something. So I'm like, all right, I'm going to book the book my haircut just the week before and then one after so that way I don't miss it. Because at the end of the day, it's like, like I said, it's that level of, it's not just about looking good all the time. It's, that's one thing. That's important. Don't get me wrong. It's really good to be presentable. But more so is that like unloading, coming in unloading. And I feel like sometimes you're, you're a therapist. Oh, thank you. Thank you. But uh, you don't need a therapist, man. No. You're a sunshine. You're good. So one thing that I've noticed as well, too, and I've, uh, you know, you and I have a lot of common friends as well, too. Every time that you're invited to a wedding or like an event and somebody's presenting or whatever, like there is some sort of, somebody's on the, on the spotlight. You always do this, and I thought it was like the most endearing thing ever. You bring your tools to the party. <laughs> I remember.
remember one of our friends for us, you took him over on the side and you like fixed <laughs> him up. Okay, let's go back to the wedding. No problem. Well, this is my responsibility, man. The look, it's my responsibility. I have to take care of it. If, if everybody know Fadi, Sam's a friend or Sa, uh, Fadi's Khalil Barbershop client and he has a bad hair, that's a bad, uh, <laughs> bad influence. Oh, yeah. But and that's something that I'm, I'm always proud about. Like when someone asks me, hey, where did you get that haircut? I'm always like, yeah, my buddy is one of my best friends. He's, you know, I've known him for 25 years. His name is Sam. Try to book with him. And I always say try to book with him because I know it's very <laughs> hard to get on his calendar. Like I literally book it sometimes six, eight weeks in advance to just be on the calendar. The charisma is, is a huge thing. You don't learn that. It's just something that normally comes out naturally. 100%. How, you born with it. how do you feel like you're, you know, you honed it over the years? Actually, I couldn't talk about myself or about my charisma. I, I don't see it. I don't know. If, if you say I have the charisma, I, thank you. That's a big thanks. But the charisma, the way you say it, either you have it or you don't have it. Yeah. I can tell you how. I, like, I've seen it with you over the last 25 years. And I've learned from it. With all honesty, I've learned a lot from it. Thank you. The biggest thing I find when I'm sitting in your chair, everyone, whether it's me or someone else sitting in Farzad's chair or Adam's chair, you really care. For sure I do care. When you ask the question, you're not just asking the question to, hey, how you doing? I hate when people do that. You actually wait and listen. and Eye contact, yes. Eye contact. Even though you're looking in the mirror, it's still eye yeah. contact. And you're asking more and tell me more and let me know and how does that make you feel what do you think of that because how is your I business do care. going because I do care yeah because I do care when I ask not how you doing whatever no how you doing I, I'm waiting I'm listening you know because I do care I have like Fadi I do care about Fadi who's after Fadi I do care about you know what I yeah. mean and I'm waiting for because I don't work with with the full respect for a walk in but I don't I'm booked for a walk in so I've been working with a regular client, regular client, you know, that, that's come like friends. Yeah. You know what I mean? They came very close to friends. I've never seen you taking a single walk-in, actually. It's always... Do you know, I, I hang out with my client sometimes. We go out with my regular client. Oh, I know, I've been yes. there. <laughs> yes, yes. <laughs> you actually... So funny enough, Sam actually came to my wedding, and this was, God, 2007. So like, I've known you for years. And the same thing, you brought your tools at the wedding, and you're like, oh, we gotta fix this, because you were... Sammy's wedding. Sammy's wedding, my brother. And, <laughs> and I feel like sometimes you know more about me than most people out there. For sure, man, after 25 years. Yes, for sure. So that's the question that, you know, begs itself. Do you think a lot of barbers out there do the same exact thing? I couldn't tell you, but most barbers, they consider it, it's work. After work, that's it. They're done. N done. No, it's, it's not. It, barber is uh, more than just a job. Barber, you, ha you have to love what you're doing. You have to care what you're doing. Okay. If I don't care about you, why should I go to your wedding? Makes sense. And it was far. It wasn't I shut the shop. I can go home. I can go do my, my own thing. But because you care... You go to this wedding yeah. because you like this person. You know what I mean? But a lot of barbers, they go just to work. Do you know how many barbers, they go to work? They hate their job. They don't want to go to work. You know what I mean? Yeah. But I'm telling you, most barbers, you can say 95%, they're going to work with love. They cannot wait to go to the barber shop. And Sam, you've been in Ottawa for pretty much all your life. You know, how do you feel about the city? Unfortunately, I love the city. I love Ottawa. I love Canada. But it's not the same. It's not the same. Even the city is not the same. It's not the same as it's, before? It's, or? Man, the city is it's not the same. For example, now you can open a barbershop. You have no license. You can open a barbershop. Okay? Mm -hmm. I'm telling you, I knew so many barbershops. They don't have even HST number. Yeah. And they work... And they don't have a debit machine. They have ATM machine, okay? And the city, they let them work and they don't pay taxes. They don't pay HST. Even they pay their barber by cash, okay? And they're opening and they're working. What kind of system is this? When you have a professional business who has a debit machine, the money, everybody knows, the government, they know where the money goes, all right? And they go after them, they pick on them, and they give them a hard time. Well, I'm the... I'm the professional, but you're running after me. Why don't you go after those corruption small business? 
and you're talking about the city or the sorry uh, revenue Canada they go after professional and they leave the the crook yeah. people opening business ripping them off well it makes sense I mean if, if they're not registered the revenue Canada doesn't really know much about them but It's also on the city to go and say, hey, by the way, Revenue Canada, this is these guys are open. You know, they should share the books. You I don't know if should I should I talk about it. I tell you story. Yeah, we we'll leave politics out of it for now. <laughs> not politics. <laughs> It's not politics, but uh, everybody knows barber shop, hair salon, nail, uh, nail salon. We closed two years in a row, six months. Yep. Okay. And they've been Revenue Canada after me, there, uh, which is I have a credit. You know, I, I'm not gonna talk about it, but and this is we're talking about the pandemic, like with the whole pandemic. Yeah, but the revenue cars, they're not doing yeah. the right job, man. They're not doing the right job. Well, we'll go into politics for 30 seconds and then we'll come out. I just heard actually uh, one of they were they were pushing for a vote of uh, confidence with the prime minister. So that you know that might change things a little bit. We'll see. That's we're talking very deep. Uh, yeah, but let's, let's get out of politics for now. Yeah. That's, that's all we gotta do for <laughs> politics for now. So let's go back to talking about the city. But in this time, I want to talk about the city as you see it with your own eyes, not about the barber shop, just about people and the culture and all of that and how you feel about it. Actually, okay. The city, it is growing. It's growing fast. It's not the same as 80s. That's for sure. It's not safe as before. Like you know, I couldn't park my car anywhere and leave safe. They steal cars left and right. A crime is, is getting bigger and bigger. I, I, sh, I don't know if I have a right to talk about the immigration. They're bringing the wrong people to Canada. I am, a, I am an immigrant. But they should bring the right people yeah. who <coughs> has education, who speak the language, who has the money. Okay? Not people to come here because already we're in a deep, recession and inflation and we're bringing people we have to get them houses we have to pay them uh, a welfare and we have to educate them well, you know this is bad for the city and we're not ready for that mm -hmm. so I don't think the immigration they're doing the right job either yeah but if you were to compare Ottawa to places like Toronto Montreal and you've traveled around quite often like not for just sure you know As a city, as a place to raise kids and family and all of that. Ottawa is the best place to raise family. It used to be better, but it's still better than uh, Toronto. Toronto, I like it for the business. Mm -hmm. For business-wise, fashion, brand name, yeah. Toronto. But for family, to raise family, Ottawa is still way better. It still eats the cake. It's one of the safest cities, too, even though there is crime. It's still rated one of the safest cities, but... Then again, every other city, the crime raised up, so it doesn't, you know, at the end of the day, it's still in a wash. Yes, yes, because the more population, the more crime it goes. Yeah. But uh, the more population, I hope will bring better quality. The right quality immigrant. people, yes. yeah, that's, that's something that the, again, we're not going into politics, but that's something that the, uh, the government should be looking at. So going back to the business, and, you know, you've mentioned multiple times you've got a lot of other businesses, a lot of other barbers that opened up around you. How do you feel that affected your business as a competition and what are, you, what are your thoughts on that? No, it doesn't affect uh, my business for so many reasons. First of all, those people who used to work for me, they open around me, close to me, or it doesn't affect business. Why? First of all, if your business 100 milligram, that capacity, okay? Mm. They left, they might take 5-10%. Okay, but then you're gonna refill it. You know, you have a good reputation. So the reason we are full, that why we cannot take a new client. Yeah. But if someone left, they took as a friend, his cousins, his little bit of client, gonna be refilled. And it doesn't bother me at all if they open, because if they didn't open, somebody stranger barber they gonna open. So let them open. I don't care. At least it's someone I that wish you know, the best. Trained. Yes, exactly. I wish them the best, you know. And if they do good, I'll be proud of them. But if they didn't do good, I feel bad. Yeah, and I, I don't think for you it's a, it's a big issue because you also, as we mentioned before, you do have this really annoying thing where you can't 
find a booking within a week. It has to be at least four or five weeks in advance. So for it's you, I don't think it's mess. an issue. It's hit and miss, but it's hit and miss. But uh, sometimes you're lucky to book an appointment if someone had a consolation. Yeah. For example, who has an appointment? They cancel, you can get it the same day or day before. I've never been able to get a walk-in for the last five years. <laughs> so I walk in and be like, oh yeah, I'm going to go visit Sam. Maybe I'll get a haircut. It's just, no. You can I'll visit, visit you can I have can't a coffee, but you can't get a haircut. <laughs> no haircut. Yeah, no. But sometimes that's all I needed. And uh, some, sometimes people, they think, oh, I know Sam. Sam is a good friend of mine. Let's try to get a haircut without an appointment. I do respect them. I do like them. But I cannot serve them. No, because boundaries. Who has an boundaries. Appointment, he's the king. So one thing I love about this guy is the boundaries. Like when you walk, like literally, I've seen it before. I'd walk in. I think one time I walked in, I had no appointment. No, you had just, an appointment. Oh no, I had the wrong date. You know, wrong date. Wrong yes. date. But I just so lucked out that someone just canceled. <laughs> and you were very like, okay, you can sit in the chair, but you're not supposed to have an appointment today. <laughs> but then right after, someone came in and tried to do the same thing. But they didn't have an appointment. They were just a walk in. Yeah. Can't. And they got a little upset. And you're like, well, why are you getting upset? It's just, you have to book. You have to book in advance. Which to me is, is self-respect. It's showing... I respect client. my client who yeah. has an appointment. Imagine you have an appointment and someone walk in. And I take the walk in. And who has an appointment has to wait. That's not right. No. Or people who come late, 10, 15 minutes, and they tell you, oh, I have only 15 minutes. Okay, so do you want me to cut your hair for five minutes? No. No. I don't want to give you a haircut for five minutes. So respect your time, and I respect you. Yeah. If you don't respect your appointment, sorry, I still respect you, but I couldn't serve you. So and I've had those situations where I'm like running late, and it's not often, but when I do run late, can't get my beard trim. Sorry. It's your mistake. Yeah, exactly. So he'll say like, no, no, I'll just get your hair. I'm going to do it. Yeah. The, the client who come in time, it's not his fault. If you come late. Exactly. Exactly. And that's the thing. Respect is one big thing with a lot of businesses, especially when it comes to service business. I find here in Ottawa, it's a, it's a hit and miss with service business. For example, trades, like there's a certain amount of businesses that I, I work with, with trades, where they give you this massive window, oh, I'll be here between 8 and 12. Well, and then you don't show up until 12. And then you got to start there. Meanwhile, I took the half the day off to, to be there with you. And you show up at 12 and now I have to be there till... Three. What I don't like about this trade, someone book an appointment, doesn't show up. It's not about money, I get upset. First, I find it disrespect. Mm -hmm. Second, someone need an appointment. They're not able to book it. Yeah. So that client, he didn't get an appointment. He waste my time. He waste the other client time and money in the same time. That one thing I really don't like about this trade. It makes yeah, sense. and it's... it's Again, it's a, it, it's a hit and miss, I find, with a lot of people. It's like you, you have to kind of coach them on respecting your time sometimes. Yes, I talk to them in a nice way next time. But uh, those people, if they do it twice... Off the client list. Yes. Yeah. No, it makes sense because at the end of the day, like, if you don't respect yourself, why are you expecting people to respect you? It's but just not going to happen. No, my relationship between me and him, it's a business. When he's affecting my business and ruin my day, and wasting my time. No, it has so many barbershop, they can go somewhere else. But with me... No. no. And that's, boundaries are a big thing for you. Boundaries are massive. Um, so, you guys started, like recently in the last, uh, I want to say maybe three or four years, the, the whole booking system got really refined, and it's so easy to book now that it's just, you know... Like the you website. Yeah. Yes. Website. It's more than three, no, even before COVID. Yeah, but, but the reason why I want to bring it up is because I always, you know, again, I've been there for 25 years, and I've always, every couple of years or so, there's something new in the business. So tell me a little bit more about what you do to innovate and, and to grow the business, and why do you do that? First, to renovate or change color is something in you. It makes you feel, you get motivation to work. If you have the same stuff for years, you get bored of it. Yeah. Okay? I like equality. I like equality. I'll be, like, I feel I proud can, to have you, you equality. Don't tell. You don't tell. I mean, look at, look at what you're wearing, the glasses, the, you know, that Thank charisma you. that you have, the Thank hair. You. Thank you. Thank you. Of course you like quality. I love quality for a reason. You can buy a barber chair for $1,200. When you sit on it, it's wiggly. 
when the client come with the snow, salt, it melt, it get rusty. Okay. When you get the Belmont chair, it's a $10,000 chair. Yeah. You sit on it, you feel solid. But it is 10000 But in the long run, it's cheap. Because it doesn't get rusty, doesn't get trapped. You, you know, and it lasts. Like my chair, I have it for almost eight years. You look at it, it's a brand new, no scratch, no rust, nothing. You sit on it, you can do the right job because it's not wiggly. Mm -hmm. Okay. Counters. If you have a, a cheap counters, drip some water, start peeling, scratching, you know. And you have to think about sanitizing too. The wood sometimes it can take bacteria. Yeah. You've seen the granite. This Very one. elegant. Yes. It goes for, a, that's quality. Yeah. And then for you guys, the sanitizing is, is massive. Like I've never ever felt for one second that I'm worried about using someone else's no, razor or anything so like sanitizing that. Sanitizing and you no, know, the tools are sharp. When you, when you use uh, sharp tools, it's easier for us. When you change the blade, it's easier for us. You know what I mean? Yeah. When you clean the tools, the clipper, it works better. You know what I mean? It's better and cleaner for the customer and you see it. Well, what we do and uh, upgrade the barber shop. It's it's easier for us and motivate us instead to get bored. The same look, the same color of walls, the same. You know what I mean? So it's nice to change a little bit. And as you see, every couple months we see you, you can see a new trophy, top choice award. You know we have so much. We have a wall. It's full of awards. Yeah. So pictures. Yeah. I think the biggest thing for you, like I've said, I've noticed that change is always changing. It's always innovating. So, you know, in a couple of words, what would you tell businesses out there? Why is the reason for you to change other than the motivation? Motivation. And if we're changing tools, it's better. For example, if you have a tool, instead to change the blade of the clipper, for example, you change the whole clipper, get the newer, get the stronger. You know what I mean? It's easier and better. And the customer, when he see it, and you notice, oh, you have a new tools. Oh, you have a new scissor. Oh, you have the... Yeah. The customer can see it. Customer, he has to see you improving your business. You know what I mean? He feel good. You're getting something good to use it on him. Yeah. You know it's what the I mean? same as, like, it's quality over quantity. That's one thing that I've noticed about you guys. Is like, it's always the quality. You know, your haircut is 40 minutes. It's not a 20-minute haircut. Let's get out, get in. Well, it's a 40 minutes skin, you sit down and it's clean. Fade. It takes time. You cannot, uh, you cannot rush it. Yeah. If you rush it, your haircut is going to be just like any barber. No, for sure. Give it a time. Do it. Obviously, the client, he's paying you. Give him what he paid for. And a, a big thing as well I noticed is I've never seen you once talking to your staff about cleanliness or cleaning. They're yeah. always right on the ball. Like the second someone finishes a chair, whoever's off, like Adam would be off, he starts sweeping. There's you always someone doing something. You know why? Because they know their job. If I going to repeat it, that means he's not belong to Khalil Barbershop. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You talk to them, you show them, they know their job, done. If I going to keep, oh, do this, I clean this, wipe this. Well, I don't have time for that. And he's not belong to our team. They can go somewhere else. Yeah. So in essence of time, because we're almost coming to close to the show, I wanted to kind of just ask you, a big question. What's next for Khalil Barbershop? Mm. How many awards are we looking at? Mm, that, that's a big question. Actually, I have a plan. I have a plan. But in the right time, to make it as a franchise. And I'm working on it. Mm -hmm. I'm not rushing it. I'm working on it to make it as a franchise. About award, award, I couldn't tell you. Because it's not me who get the award. You vote for me, you vote for me, they vote for me. You know what I mean? And you never know. Everybody has a limit. You know what I mean? I've been going up up since from 1990 to 2024 going up. But where are you going to go? Everybody has a limit. Yeah. And sometimes you have to give up because I, a word, it is bring me a lot of satisfaction for sure. But in the end, sometimes you're going to say, okay, let some other barber, let them get something. Yeah. You know what I mean? So I might one day, I give up, but not yet. And the other question, but you don't have to answer it now. When are we going to have the next cigar session? 
I'm ready anytime. <laughs> I'm ready anytime. Sounds good. Really appreciate your time here, Sam. I invite you guys to check out the website, Khalil Barber Shop. Good luck trying to book it. If you want to book it, you know, I would say now, jump in on hopefully the summer. Uh, no, if you ever come back to book it, I'll be there for you. With that being said, Sam, again, thank you so much for, uh, for coming here to the show. And if you guys like what you see, please hit the like button. Uh, and hit the subscribe as well too so you can get more and more about the show uh, about the businesses that we have here in ottawa and learn more about what ottawa has to offer if you want to hit the bell icon as well too this way you'll get notified every time a new episode comes out and you'll know more about this lovely city and uh, thanks again appreciate it thank you freddy thanks for the invitation i really like it and hopefully we'll see you soon perfect <laughs>